I worry about that generation. I worry about that generation because I have not yet read a poem from a Gen Zer <laughs> that has really opened itself to me, mm. if you know what I mean. I just like haven't really connected with a lot of the Gen Z poems. <laughs> so. Welcome to Liquid Courage, the podcast where I, Amanda Pereira, sit down with a fellow female artist that I admire and ask them the questions I've never had the guts to ask them before. Sounds scary? Well, it is. So I use a little liquid courage in the form of their favorite drink. We cheers, chat, and connect as I attempt to soak up all the wisdom these women have to offer. Today I sit down with Knox and enjoy some straight vodka on ice. <laughs> yep. Professionally known as Karen Knox, Knox is an actor and filmmaker based in Toronto. As an actor, she is best known for playing Veronica in the critically acclaimed and award-winning series Barbell, and as Boris in the new comedy series Slow Pitch, out on Out TV Go. This Christmas, you can catch her playing Holly Frost in Sci-Fi Network's anti-Hallmark Christmas movie, Letters to Satan Claus. In January of this year, Knox launched her film Cons and Pros on Vice.com, which she created alongside Gwendolyn Cummin and Jay Stevens. It's a heist film within a heist, and I definitely recommend checking out both the film and the write-up about it on Vice.com. And if you still can't get enough Knox, check out her autofiction blog on her website. I find the aesthetic so whimsically romantic, alluring, provocative, and a great little world of wonder. Now, during this interview, the internet failed us just a bit, and we were disconnected a few times, which really just gave me a great opportunity to drink some more vodka and Knox an opportunity to do some online shopping on Etsy. But in case you hear us referencing any internet troubles or things like that, I wanted to give you some context. So Knox is an actor, a filmmaker, and a woman I admire immensely. Hi, Knox. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Going? So, so well. So we are drinking. Okay, I have to tell you. So I, of course, I ask all my guests, what's your favorite drink? Like, what's your, what drinks you'll be drinking as your liquid courage? And mm -hmm. when you emailed me back saying, I, my go-to drink is vodka, three ice cubes in a, in a mini mason jar. I yeah. died because I, I don't know you other than the internet. <laughs> and I thought, Yep, this totally represents what I think of her. Fucking badass. Uh, knows what she wants. Like, perfect, like, curator director. Like, I know what I want. I know how I want it. And it's going to be fun. Here we go. I'm like, what? <laughs> so yeah. I'm excited to drink straight up vodka with you today. <laughs> what I, kind of vodka are you drinking? I'm drinking Absolute because it was in Ooh. my fridge. B very nice, very nice. Honestly, like people can be people can be snobby about about absolute, but like honestly, like yeah. what's the difference? If you're drinking vodka, you're drinking if you're drinking yes. vodka on the rocks, you're drinking <laughs> vodka on the rocks. Like yeah. don't like don't don't like don't dick it around. Like it's I know. You know. I did have a plastic bottle of Smirnoff in my freezer and I was like, no. Very Maybe, nice. Because I got scared. I haven't drank straight up vodka for a while and I got scared of Smirnoff. So I was like, I I'm, I was like in the depths of my fridge. I have to have something else. And then I found mm. it. What kind mm. of vodka are you drinking today? I, I always drink uh, Stolchnaya. It's mm. my my uh, my Russian go-to. Yes. Um, I had I had like an extraordinary large bottle of Grey Goose for a little while that was a, yeah. a gift from somebody. That I that I drank for a little for for you know for the, for the two and a half days that it lasted, um, <laughs> but uh, no Stoli Stoli's my go-to. It's my little mm. my little after work treat for oh, myself. I love I love. I actually have another little glass of just um, olive juice and two olives in case yeah. I can't take it. But I am very I am, nice. No, but I'm gonna hold out. Like that's gonna be for the end of the podcast. I just down some olive juice. Oh, yum, yum. Yes, a martini is uh, also like a lovely treat. Mm, like, yes. I, 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 and I do miss them because, like, you know, quarantine has been interesting. We can chat about mm. that. <laughs> but I do like, because you kind of feel like an, a jackass making mm. a martini for yourself in your <laughs> own apartment. Yes, I've done you know? it and I feel like a jackass. That's a perfect. Yeah, mistake. it's just like, it's a bit um, like pretentious in the wrong way. 
Yeah. Like, it's like, like going to like, if you're sitting on the Riviera and you're like having a cock and you're having a martini, it's very nice. It's a nice mm. thing to do for yourself. But if you're just like in your apartment, like watching Selling Sunset and drinking a martini, it's like, oh, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Yeah. What season are you on? Oh, I finished it. It's so oh, you're done. I, I'm done. Where are you? Where are you? I am, I'm still in season one. It was like, okay. I'm not a reality television person at all. Um, <laughs> but I, but my creative partner was like, you'll, you'll really like this. Cause you'll really <laughs> like, you'll really like this one lady in it. And I was like, okay, tell me more. And so she showed me Christine Quinn oh my, yeah. Instagram. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, I was like, oh, I think I would like this lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I am so, so Interested as you go on to see what you think of her and I hate oh, spoilers, so, but I'm just so interested to see because my opinion of people changed like as as it does Ooh. throughout the season so and I don't know how much is fabricated whatever but sure I I don't know I mean I'm not going to reality tv for truth I'm going there for entertainment and stakes that ultimately don't matter so that my heart yes. can handle it you know so who yeah cares? Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I love her clothes mm -hmm. and, and I can't like, it's so funny. Reality television show is so strange to me. Like I was, I've been thinking about, I've been thinking about why, oh, there's like a little honking fest happening outside my apartment right now. That's nice. But I've been <laughs> thinking about why, why we like reality television and like what it, what it is about it that, that I find palatable because like, I'm, it's not really my thing, but I've really been enjoying selling mm. sunset. And I'm like, what is it about this aesthetic that, that is so appealing to me? And I think that it is kind of in a strange way, like uh, it's a bit camp in, a, mm. in, in an interesting way. And that, you know, it's always really, really rich people, but it's not like aspirationally rich people. It's kind of like rich people who are like, oh my God, like, <laughs> like they're, they're just like, they're so into, dr like they're so dramatic and their lives are so like outrageous and they're all pretty stupid and like self-centered and like, Nobody is like a humanitarian or like an intellectual or whatever. Yeah. It's all just kind of like really wealthy, um, kind of like, like corny, like idiots. Yeah. It's like <laughs> caricatures. Like you're, you yeah. kind of don't believe. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, but there's like, there's something like, it's just so, it's so pretty though too. Like all the houses are so nice. Anyways, I'm like, I'm, I'm definitely engaging in a dialogue with myself as to like why I'm interested at all in this, in this like, <laughs> like arguably wretched, terrible television series that I just can't get enough of. Yeah. Um, so like to be continued, I'm taking it <laughs> slow with Selling Sunset. I have to like, like I start watching it, but I'll, I'll feel guilty after a while. So I'm just like, why, are, why am I watching this? Like, God, like I have a Criterion Collection subscription. Like I should be watching fucking <laughs> Agnes Varda films and like Francois Truffaut. Like what am I doing? I was the producer on that. Like every time I see the producer's name at the end of an episode, I'm like, you bastard. <laughs> what are you doing? I blame what you. What are you maybe addicted to? <laughs> Shit. I know. I'm in this like constant war with myself of like, who, I love reality TV. Who cares? And I'm also like, I want to write scripted content and I'm yes. watching, I mean, probably scripted, but you know yes. what I mean? I should be watching other scripted content. And then I'm like, you know what? You also need some time to just relax and not. So I I'm constantly in an inner dialogue with myself of shame and then resenting yeah. the shame that I feel for myself with reality. I don't TV. think like, I don't think you should feel any shame at all. Like my, my, so my creative partner, Gwendolyn Cummins, mm -hmm. is absolutely obsessed with reality television, like watches so much of it and yeah. is a real connoisseur. But she is like probably watching, she consumes like more content than maybe anyone I know on the planet. Like I don't, she's like one of those people where like you question how many hours a night she sleeps and like if she has a machine where she can just like extend time yeah. because there is like there li like there isn't a film or a like a, a television program that like she has not watched like she's oh. a walking encyclopedia of like every piece of content that's like ever been made post like 2008 she's seen everything <laughs> so it's so and she watches reality tv all the time and i think she's one of the smartest people and most creative well, people that i know so so there you go Zero, zero guilt. Like, yeah, I'm just, just going to quote her. I'm going to be like, excuse me, Gwen and Carmen yeah. watches a ton of it and as do I. So enough. Yeah. hundred percent. Well, yeah. I did want to, um, just for context for viewers or watchers, I wanted to say, so 
This is our first conversation. We have never met before. Um, I know. I like it so much. I love it. I love it. I, so I first was introduced to you because you spoke on a panel that was put on by All Right Alice Productions like a, a few years ago. Uh, yes. Yes. And I yes. saw you speaking there. So I'm friends with somebody uh, who, who is a part of Alice or All Right Alice Productions. And I saw you there and immediately I was like, oh, I want to know more what she's about because I just loved what you had to say. And I, I, oh, yeah, I was so really nice. drawn towards you. And so I think I must have then like followed you on Instagram or something. And then- mm -hmm. The moment I knew, oh, I want her on the podcast is you. Uh, so I think you posted an article that was written about you um, and Gwendolyn had also, um, mm -hmm. you and her made the short film Cons and Pros. Oh, yeah. And I read this article and I was like, <laughs> no fucking way. I have to talk to her. Okay. So just uh, for, just for context, yeah. um, Cons and Pros is a short film. Essentially, mm -hmm. you pulled off a heist. Mm -hmm. filming a movie about a heist yeah and I think I think it was like if you actually so if, if the budget for this short film would have been something like $35,000 but you were able to film it mm -hmm. for like 1500 or something like that yeah so I want to know mm -hmm. and first of all people should totally go read this article on vice.com and I will link mm -hmm. to it because it's so I I read it multiple times um <laughs> were you ever afraid of getting caught at any stage, any of it, the makeup parts, the getting clothes, like any of it, were you ever afraid of getting caught? No. <laughs> How? Um, How? Like, <laughs> definitely not. So that was a very interesting time in my life. Um, it, was no, it was November 2019. <laughs> Coronavirus was, you know, just incubating in a market in Wuhan and um nothing nothing bad was on the horizon um except that my personal life was in a bit of a mess um in a good way in like a in a fun dramatic way i say like yes personal life in a mess but like i'm sort of addicted to a, a, just a tiny bit of chaos and in in, in 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 a life you know it's kind of fun i i i i like to operate on that level so anyways um yeah i was kind of like i was like a bit thrill seeking at that point i was kind of I had just gotten back from London with a sort of a sort of messy um, a messy exit from London, London England, mm. and um, had really just been hitting the Stoli coffee diet like real hard in like a <laughs> in a very like glamorous kind of way where I was like oh I just wake up and make art and drink vodka <laughs> and coffee and and then um, you know and then try to like cook up schemes with my with my other friends to make movies. Um, so I was like definitely thrill seeking, I think a little bit at that point. And, um, yeah, so we, we came up with the idea for this short while we were all sort of like day drunk in a bar and we called the concierge at the un unmentioned hotel, mm -hmm. um, that, that afternoon while I was like, like wasted on martinis at a bar on Queen West. And I called a concierge and I like laid it on thick and was like, I'm proposing to my girlfriend on Sunday. Like, I'm so excited. Like, and, and she was delightful and charming and, and booked us a room real quick. And then like, once we, once I hung up the phone, we were like, we knew like it was on. Like you're like, committed we were, at that point. Yeah. Committed, absolutely committed. And I mean, I like, it really was, I think Amanda, um, true to the name of the pod, um a liquid courage sort of situation Aww. where it was like you know i you know it was forged in the fires of you know six ounces of vodka of distilled yeah. ice cold chilled vodka um and then we just kind of had to do it but i was like i i had been <clears throat> wanting to make a film about heist women for a while mm -hmm. and uh we are i i can't really I can't really talk about it too much because there's like a couple irons in the fire about it, but that story is going to be extended and we're going to be shooting it in a similar, but slightly more legal way. Um, <laughs> Congrats. That's as, a, as a, as a, as a feature film. Yeah. I'm pretty, yeah, I'm very, I'm very, I'm very excited about it. I, I'm so jazzed about like that aesthetic, that world, that kind of like, um, hybridization of, of, um, of like fiction and reality in filmmaking. Mm -hmm. I think that it's like, it's a very exciting medium to be sort of playing in. 
Um, so yeah, I can't wait to make more of it. <laughs> more, and were you, more. So, were you mm, always so sort of like, I guess I'm wondering, were you always sort of um, drawn towards like this sense of adventure or like rebellion, like as a kid or growing up, were you sort of like a rule breaker? Yes. I would have to say that like, unfortunately, I have come to terms <laughs> with the fact very recently that I am addicted to misbehavior. Mm. Um, I just like can't, like, I just have a taste for it. And it's not, it's not necessarily like, I, I'm not like, you know, I've never been like arrested, like, like, okay, well, <laughs> I mean, define arrested. Um, but you know, I don't like, I don't like break the law or anything like that, but I really do. I really do enjoy. And I really do like, um, rule breaking and misbehavior and, mm. and in whatever form that comes in, whatever sort of like, you know, comes in many different, uh, many different forms, but yes, no, definitely. Um, yeah, always been a bit, a bit, a bit addicted to that. Yes. Well, and it's so interesting to think about, like for me when I'm, cause I know, um, you had voiced on another podcast that like you grew up, mm. um, quite religious and you went to Bible mm. camp and mm -hmm. I'm wondering like, Oh, look at this beautiful photo of you. <laughs> oh, there we go. Hi. Um, no, it's fine. Um, yeah, like I, uh, I had heard you say in another podcast that like you grew up really religious and mm -hmm. you Bible camp. And so I'm like picturing this young Knox in yes. the animal world and then also loving to break rules. Like, do you think there's any sort of part of that that's like, because yeah, growing up, growing up religious, it can be a lot about, at least for me, it was a lot about here are the rules. Here's what you do to be good. Here's what you do. And then you're bad. Yeah. What, what role did like growing up in religion play for you in loving misbehavior? Mm. Well, I think like, I think the Roman Catholic, like the Roman Catholic faith, which is the one that I was raised in, like it just produces the weirdest, freakiest people. Were you, were you, <laughs> were you raised, raised religiously? I on so my parents are divorced on one side I was and on the other side I wasn't okay, okay. yeah yeah I find that like I mean the catholic faith is so like s&m tinged it's absolutely bonkers <laughs> when you really think about it like I remember I was recalling the other not the other day but when I you know I've, I've had this discussion with a couple of the people and I was recalling as a child during the festivity of Easter in the Catholic faith at the particular parish that I attended for many years as a young girl, um, St. Timothy's Catholic Church. Oh. There's a ritual where in the Easter ceremony, you stand in a line with full grown weird waspy adults and you approach the altar where a life-sized body of Christ on the cross is laying on the altar. So this is a man who has been nailed to the cross, who is only wearing a loincloth. And then you get down on your knees to this naked man who is nailed to a fucking cross and you kiss his feet. And then, and then two little 13 year old boys go down, who are the altar boys, go down and wipe his feet so that the next person can get down on their knees and kiss a naked man nailed to a cross his feet. Like, tell me what is more SNM than that. Like, I cannot think, like, like that is the kind of shit that you'd be seeing in, like, burn hang. Like, it's, like, it's honestly, like, it's, it's ridiculous to me. When I was, like, when I truly considered that, I was, like, yeah. this is insane. Like, what? And there's, like, these nice ladies with their, like, you know, like ankle length skirts and like cable knit sweaters were like ferrying around like five children because like their husbands like won't like fuck them with condoms. Like, it's just like, it's so backwards. And like, it's just like, and then they're like, they swing incense, which makes people hallucinate. Mm. And like, and the, the, like, it's just, I think the Catholic faith is like, it's so freaky. So I think could you like, did you feel like when you were younger being raised in that, did you feel like you could still be your own, like authentic unedited self? Or did you feel like oh. you sort of had to like figure out how to filter yourself through it? Definitely not. I mean, like, so I, I like leaned in hard to Jesus as mm -hmm. like a, as a, as a, as a preteen. 
Um, and then I realized that like Jesus was not down with me if I wanted to like eat box. So I was right. like, okay, well, I'm going that way. Like, what am yeah. I? Gonna, yeah, it's an yeah. Easy I was place. like, well, it was a crazy thing too because I was like, because I was really into Jesus, but I was also really into girls. So I was like, mm, I was like, real crossroads here. Yeah. Like, what am I gonna do? So. I guess now it's easy to laugh about because I can see how, or, or it feels like to me that you're like, so one, you can so easily like celebrate who you are and what you want. And, you know, mm -hmm. but I'm thinking about like, yeah, this young girl. And like, it sounds like really early on, you got the message that you sort of mm -hmm. had to rebel the rules. Like the rules don't, the rules won't work for you if you want to be who you are, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I can, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was pretty like well behaved though. Like I, I um, I was, I was the valedictorian. Oh. Um, uh, and, and I also hilariously like won the good Christian award at my, at my Catholic high school. Um, so I was like, I was like pretty, you know what I learned? You know what I learned? I learned early. Mm -hmm. um, was like how to like misbehave, like, but like under the radar, <gasps> which is the best way to misbehave. Mm -hmm. Um, because you don't really want to, because if you get too much attention then it's like, then you, then you don't get to do it anymore. But if you can like misbehave in such a way where you're kind of like flying under the radar, radar then you continually get to misbehave. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think that's what I, I think that's what I learned. Yeah. Uh, in my in my early in my early days as a, <laughs> as a criminal <laughs> <laughs> and what is your what is your so is your family still religious do they still practice Catholicism? Like on, no hilariously <laughs> i mean i think i think a lot of boomers were sort of into church um in a way mm -hmm. it was sort of like it was part it was more it was like kind of a thing that everybody did it was like so I, I grew up in orangeville which is like an hour outside of toronto um, and in Orangeville, it was kind of like everybody belonged to a church, but the church wasn't, um, it wasn't just a religious thing. It was a, it was a community thing. Like everybody who was involved in the church did their things. They did choir, they did like Knights of Columbus and like the <laughs> Rotary Ands and like, and it, it was kind of their way of giving back to the community too. Um, so no, neither of them, uh, practice Catholicism anymore. Um, and, uh, are both like, and they're both lovely humans. I have great parents. I, my, my parents are also divorced. Um, and they both have new partners and yeah. And neither of them like are really down with Christ anymore <laughs> either. Like I think, I wonder, it'd be really interesting to have, like it to have a sit down discussion with, uh, with either of my parents to be like, so agnostic or what are we thinking? Where are we on Jesus today? Like how yeah. are we, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, the thing is, is, um, it was so interesting. I was having this discussion with somebody the other day that I don't think that there, I think like the, the, the thin line between love and hate is, uh, a very, is a very real thing. Um, but I think that the difference between love and hate is almost irrelevant because, uh, there are things in our lives that will affect us. And I think that the pendulum um, will swing back and forth between love and hate in your life for that thing that affects you. Mm -hmm. And so um, if you love something, you will hate it. And if you hate something, you will love it. Um, in, in, like, in, in the things that are like the great hates and the great loves of your life. And I think that for me, Catholicism is like one of those things um, like there's so much about Catholicism that I find so like fucking freaky and cool and weird. Like there's so many stories from the Bible where I'm like, that's a banger. <laughs> like the story of the crucifixion of Christ is a unequivocal banger. Like it's so, <laughs> it's so cool. It's so it like there's betrayal, there's homosexuality. If you read into it the way that I like to read into it, it's like an iconic love triangle. There's a person like struggling with like, his like his commitment to like the state and his own pain and like his duty to to his like his to his parental figure it's got everything like the story of the crucifixion of christ box um and i also love the ten commandments the ten commandments another fucking banger 
Um, so I'm like, there's a lot of things about Catholicism that I like really love. Mm -hmm. um, while, while at the same time, like, it's terrible. <laughs> like, they're, like they, there's so much wrong with the Catholic Church. Like, mm -hmm. numero uno, like, like we can't have female priests. Their hatred of the gays. Their, you know, killing of people. It, it just and mismanagement of money, greed, mol molestation, frankly. Like, the list goes on and on and on and on. It's You're so like pendulum on. swinging with your hands. You're like, on and know, on exactly. and on. Oh, yeah. yeah. So there's just so, there's so much about it that is like absolutely wretched. But at the same time, it was like, it was a big part of like who I was when I, when I was growing up. And, uh, and I think that, and even like from an aesthetic perspective, like I'm really into like, like all of the men wear really fancy, pretty dresses. Like, it's like, they're just drag queens, guys. Like, they're like, like, have you seen what the Cardinals wear? Like, boys be fucking pimping. Like, the, like, like, two popes, terrible Netflix movie, really fucking boring. The clothes, my, my, that's a different story. Also, do we want to talk about Jude Law as the young pope? Like, holy fuck, like a sartorial masterpiece in terms of like the looks he was serving in that HBO miniseries. Very, very, very good garments. And so I think that like, and they're all just dresses. They're like pretty dresses. So it's like boys just wearing beautiful, like ceremonial gowns. Yeah. It's like, no wonder I like some stuff about, <laughs> no wonder I like some stuff about, it's not all the things I like, like s and &M, pretty dresses. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Oh my God. I love that. Yeah. I love, I love like any time I've heard you speak or like just anything. I love you speak with such conviction and celebration. It truly is like contagious. I'm trying not to use the word. I'm feeling, I, I'm realizing how aware I am of trying not to use the word contagious in the last six months, but like, that's the oh. best word for it. Honestly, it's mm. just your, your conviction can be so infectious. Like when another word I shouldn't be using, but whatever, contagious, we'll go back to contagious. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I'm wondering like, actually you, actually, uh, mm. Your character in um, Barbell, Veronica, your character, mm -hmm. like I need to tell you what character you played. Uh, your character mm. said something where she's like, something like, um, I'm a musician, so I'm gonna make music. Like she, she couldn't write and she was like, I'm a musician, so I'm gonna write music. And yeah. it stuck out to me because I thought, what a juxtaposition between like Knox, who just seems so fucking gung ho and set and, knows exactly what she's going to do and how she's going to do it. And I'm wondering when you're doubting yourself as an artist mm -hmm. and you're doubting your capabilities, what do you do mm -hmm. to get yourself out of that? What do you do to like get yourself back into this energy of like, fuck yeah, I, I have shit to say and I'm excited to say it. Mm. That's a great question. <clears throat> and I do like, oh my God, like every artist doubts himself, I'm sure. But yes, like many, many dark nights of the soul myself in terms of like creation. Um, I think that like, okay, this is going to sound crazy, mm. but yesterday I had a particularly spicy work day. Um, lots of emails flying in um, and uh, like a few hairy ones where we were like, cause we're, we're shooting a pilot for CBC next week um, for a, a new show that we're making. And uh, some things were like not lining up and a bit of chaos entered the room. Mm. And I unfortunately kind of like a little bit of chaos because it like lets me kind of like have my little martyr complex moment where I'm like, I can fix this. <laughs> I just have to like gird my loins and like be like, but, and, and cause like I, I am, I'm a very, I think I'm generally a very positive person, but it's extra easy for me to be super positive when everybody else is kind of negative about a situation. Cause then I get to like, cr like I get to like crucify myself and just be like, guys, we're going to get through this. We're going to do it. We can move forward. Cause like I, for whatever reason, love to be like, love to play the little hero. Um, in like a moment where like everybody, where everybody's like, where everybody's like, Oh, we're a little lost. Like, how are we going to pull this off? I'm like, no, I got this. Um, so 
I guess the answer to your question is, I think whenever, whenever I am feeling um, like I'm not really sure like what to do or like how to get something done, uh, I, I sometimes like to create a little bit of chaos and drama mm. because, because it, it, um, I find that it like, it brings me energy and, uh, it kind of, you know, it, it really like, I don't know, it gets me going. Like, it's so, it's so funny. Like the pandemic has been so wretched because I'm also like a, like an extraordinary extrovert and I, I find energy from like being around other people. Mm. Um, but I think that like, uh, in quarantine, I was just so, I was just feeling kind of like, I'm a bit bored. Like, I'm just a bit this everything's a bit dull um and there was no like i could i couldn't inject drama into my i couldn't inject drama into my personal life because i couldn't see other people which is why i like briefly lost my mind on instagram for two months for the whole world to see um which i'm sure was such a treat for everyone um namely myself who was just posting you know like nine to ten thirst traps daily with like <laughs> Foucault quotes that have been like vaguely altered by myself um but uh, yeah, so I, I like I I I tend to I tend to inject a little drama and that kind of I find that like because when you when you like I think when you put heat into your own life mm. it I think that like I don't know heat produces other heat and I and I don't know if that works for everyone but that is what works for me so I wouldn't take this like don't take my fucking advice like please. <laughs> Please don't do, please don't use this as a piece of advice. I'm just telling you what I like to do. Um, uh, yeah, like I like to create heat in my own life because it makes it makes me want to make art. Mm. I guess. Yeah, that's kind of it. <sighs> Sorry to everyone I've ever dated. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's so interesting that that um, that from like a chaotic or dramatic place, mm. your your almost like physiological or like innate response is inspiration like from mm. that it doesn't get you down it doesn't drain you maybe it does but i mean that ultimately it inspires you mm -hmm. i think that's really interesting actually when you when you were growing up i'm so curious like did you mm -hmm. feel like there was a lot of chaos around you or were you more towards like oh my god i'm bored and i want to I want to get out of here kind of feel definitely like the latter mm -hmm. definitely the latter i had a very like i had a really nice childhood like my parents were like you know it was a it was a nice a nice divorce um <laughs> and you know i had like and i had three brothers um but no like i i think i was just fucking bored all the time when i was a teenager like there there is like i used to write a lot of poetry as a teenager uh, as many you know actor artist teenagers did i'm sure i'm sure you have a poem or two in you Amanda. oh my god let me tell you how many song lyrics don't have music in all these Ooh. like notebooks that i just look at them and i'm like great rhyming scheme but these are pathetic lyrics. like you just feel so well you know what when i read them Part mm -hmm. of, I have a little tinge of embarrassment, but then I also have this like, fucking yeah, like good job 12 year old Amanda that you're going to be yeah. so transparent about your hurt and you're not going to even hide it. Like it, when yeah. you're, yeah, sometimes it's the transparency of it feels embarrassing and also feels fucking badass sometimes. <laughs> Honestly, I, I have to agree with you. Like, what's, what is like, what is like your favorite song that you oh wrote? Oh my God. There was one we didn't, I didn't even put a, a like a, uh, there was no title to it, but mm -hmm. it was like, I used to write a lot of really dark poetry, like not oh, those yeah. lyrics, but really dark. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm surprised that teachers or my parents didn't like flag it sometimes with mm -hmm. me because I'm like, Ooh, mm -hmm. like if I, but, um, there were these song lyrics that it was like, they think like they think they know but they have no idea what it's like Probably, to yeah. be where we are like that kind of thing where it's like so god i'm so misunderstood in this yeah. suburbia where i'm like you know it, yeah. just completely not self-aware but also completely self-indulgent in whatever flavor my pain is that day and i actually yeah. really appreciate that because now i'm like look how much privilege you have you're not allowed to be self-indulgent in your pain and sometimes you actually need to just validate your own pain <laughs> 
Oh, 100%. You know? yeah. And especially as a teenager, mm -hmm. like no one felt as misunderstood as you or I when we were teenagers. <laughs> like surely our experience was like 100% oh. unique mm -hmm. <laughs> beyond compare. <laughs> um, yes. Like I think that like, I, and I actually like, I love, I love teenagers so much. I think they're such wonderful creatures. And like, I worry about... But I like teenagers. Mm. I like I like old teenagers. I don't like Gen Z. It's like I'm like guys. I'm like, where's your poems? Like, I see you on TikTok with your dark academia <laughs> and your and your cottage core. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> sure. But I'm like, where are the poems? Yeah, I want the secrecy. I don't want I don't want the pain that you're putting out. Where's the pain that you're not putting out anywhere except for to yourself? That's it. I know it's like it's this curated facade yeah. of pain. And I'm like, okay, I see what you're reaching for there. But like, and it's but it's just like, I don't know. There's something like there's something that like lacks like an earnest quality about it. I don't know. And they're just not. I don't know. This is this is me going off on the Gen Zs. But it's like, they're not doing anything. They're not having any real life experiences. They're just doing it all on the internet. Ugh. So like, what are you going to write about? You can't just write about the internet. You have to like experience things in real life. Oh my God, I sound like such an old lady right now. But <laughs> yeah. I, I, I worry about that generation. I worry about that generation because I have not yet read a poem from a Gen Zer <laughs> that has really opened itself to me, mm. if you know what I mean. I just like haven't really connected with a lot of the Gen Z poems. <laughs> so I want a poem by a teenage girl who didn't get to go to her prom this year because of COVID-19. And I want it to be all about how that made her feel and how she imagined her prom would have been. So guys, the commission is out. <laughs> Send them in. And also, I don't know how many like teenage girls listen to this podcast, but like, I <laughs> I don't know if that's my age demo, like age, my target audience, but if yes. you know a teenager, please yeah. send it in. Please yes. send it. We have all of our, I'll have all of the social media stuff in the description of any of these episodes. Send them in. And Knox, if you get submissions, you have to, sh you have to tell me how they're going. I, I 100% will, but I'll also respect the privacy of any of the oh. people who, who choose. Yeah. But, but, but obviously, you know, if they were down for me to share it, I yes. will- I will share the heck out of that poem about prom on every platform that I have because I think it would be, I think it would be really amazing. I love so that. Oh my I really god! Was, I would really, I would really love to read some poems about about missed proms. Oh. <laughs> there's something, there's something quite dramatic about it, really. You were saying earlier about like talking about um, how we portray ourselves on the internet. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Or like how, how teenagers these days are portraying themselves on the internet. Oh, and, yeah. Right. And you said something really interesting in another podcast about, um, a character that you play in slow pitch, uh, boy oh, that you play. Oh, did you Boris. listen to that episode? I oh, did, I liked, of course. I, I really liked that, ep that podcast episode. I was in a very funny mood that day. So and I you really like it off the top, which I love. You're like, yeah. I'm in a really silly mood. And I was like, that's I great. Was. I was in such a silly mood that day. I had a very nice time just chit-chatting with Jay. We had many laughs. We had to edit a lot of stuff out of that podcast. Yeah. They said at the end, I think they said like you guys had chatted for two hours or something. And I think the episode's yeah. like a half an hour. Like you, they just like cut it. To, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I loved it. I think yeah, it's it was such a, a great idea. I think Jay, I, I think Jay sent me um, like a, a rough cut of, of that podcast episode. And I was like, uh... <laughs> Can we maybe ditch all the stuff like, where I like really talked about people who I never asked I could talk about? <laughs> yeah, there was some stuff that I had to get. Clipping you did not from that. That's what happens episode. when you chat with a friend, you know, when you sit down. Like, honestly, it's something that I love about, I don't know what it is about podcasts. I just love the mm -hmm. idea of, and maybe it is this whole, like nowadays it is so much about, um, social media and online and ironically we are mm -hmm. online right now but there is something really wonderful mm. about saying like hey can we dedicate this allotment of time to we're just gonna connect with each other like that is kind of yeah beautiful. I know it is honestly like I actually love going on podcasts because I feel like it's like 
okay, this is gonna sound so bad, but like, I think you're doing God's work, Amanda. Um, and honestly, like, it's like I get a free, I get like a free little therapy session for like two hours. <laughs> I love that. Me, 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 me. Now, here's me talking about Catholicism and like why, why, and like why I thought I was a lesbian and my career and what do you think? And did you write poems? And like, I want poems from Gen Z's. Um, like, it's really, it's wow, like, that it's was a great. Cool. It's Knox. That was yeah. fabulous. You can put that in the nose. It's just so, it, like, it's so, honestly, like, it's like you, you stick, you're giving people th free therapy sessions. So, like, honestly, thank you. Well, thank for me, too. Of, thank you on behalf of every guest who's been on your <laughs> podcast for, like, being such a lovely host and asking oh. insightful, beautiful questions. Oh, my and, God. And uh, letting us letting us talk about ourselves. <laughs> I love it. I love it because I really feel like it's just so hard to have moments where, it, well, and you know what, like moments where you are connecting with somebody and these are all people where these are questions like are coming from a genuinely curious place. And often, and I've said mm -hmm. this to other, other guests too, often I'm finding mm -hmm. these things that I'm curious about in my guests are things that it seems like you're in my, in my perspective, you're just thriving or doing so well in, and I'm sort of still trying to figure out how to get there in that way. So mm. honestly, it's wonderful for me as well. Like, mm. yeah. And, and I was, I was curious because you were talking about Boris and you were saying mm. that, mm. um, and that I'm paraphrasing this is, these are not your words, but you were mm. saying how you're, you're sort of, um, interested to see how audiences react to Boris. And I think that's what Jay had asked you. And you were saying, mm. because Boris is so like incongruent with the, the representation of yourself, mm put out there. So I'm curious, how totally. do you think that you come across online? Oh my God. So what a great question. <laughs> um, like, so recently, like basically since we made that, that film that we talked about earlier, Cons and Pros, um, where we heisted a hotel, I kind of have been leaning into the idea that, um, everything I do on the internet is a performance. It's not real. Like half of the, sh like, sure. Everything that I post on the internet is like from my life. Um, but it's like, but it's curated and everybody fucking knows that everybody knows that everything everybody puts online is sl a slightly curated version of reality. So I have just decided to like lean into that and acknowledge it. So I have as a like disclaimer on all my social accounts that like, this is auto fiction. And everybody's accounts are fucking auto fiction. They're like, they're these sort of like, like curated and like slightly adjusted versions of themselves. Um, but I've decided to kind of like, because I spent, because I love the internet and I love spending time on the internet. I've decided to kind of like lean into that just a little bit more and present a version of myself, which I think is like a heightened version, I guess, of me. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's like, I guess, like the persona or like the the representation of the life that I like lead on the internet is like maybe a little more glamorous or like a little more um, like wild and sexy and dangerous than it actually is in real life. Um, but at the same time, uh, like a lot of it, like, <laughs> like there, a lot of those things like do happen in my life. Like some, some of it is real and some of it is not, but I, I'm really interested in like the, the hybridization and the blending of that. Because I think that when you, when you curate a life like that and you're, and you're putting that out there, a lot of the time, like the things kind of like come to you, like it, it actually it sounds so woo woo, but um, I find that like a lot of the things that uh, I, a lot of the things that I predict or like talk about, and say are going to happen end up happening in this like weird way and it's like not that it's like manifesting or whatever but it's this kind of I think that you if you describe the kind of life that you want to live that kind of life comes to you in like a strange mm. way and um this is a long-winded answer to your question about how I think I come off on the internet I come off on the internet like a sexy dumb bitch <laughs> The dream, um, a dream podcast answer. No, I mean, it's not like as a host, I'm asking you a question and I'm hoping you give me a five word answer. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> she's talking. Oh, what did I, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love this. Yeah. I love, yeah. Um, but yeah, like it's, 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 uh, I guess, 
I don't, I don't even, I don't really know. I think it's like a work, it's an experiment and a work in progress. I'm, I'm so interested in like a couple, there was this wonderful um, Instagram artist who, wow, I just used that phrase. And I don't think I've ever said that phrase out loud before. There's this wonderful Instagram artist. <laughs> let's just, oh, let's just say it again for good measure. That's right. Instagram can be art people. <laughs> um, there's this wonderful Instagram artist out of LA who um, created this account uh, where she sort of documented uh, her experiences of going through plastic surgery and like becoming this like um, canonical, like LA, uh, like sunshine kind of like, you know, supermodel. And um, it was all fake, uh, but the account got a ton of attention. And then she uh, had a gallery show where she basically showed the kind of trajectory of this character that she had created and like hung all of like the Instagram posts as, you know, portraiture in this gallery. So the exhibition was about the, you know, curated uh, representation and character that she had created on the internet. And um, I think that like, in some ways I'm like leaning into that uh, but like not to the same degree. Cause like I post real stuff. Like I'm like, here's what I'm doing in my career. Like here's a trailer for a thing that I just directed. Like here's like slow pitch, this series that I created, like check out the trailer. But then alongside that, there'll be these like way too candid posts about being like, I'm fucking a millionaire right now. <laughs> like, like stupid shit like that, where it's like, I don't know if it's true. Like some of it's true. Um, so <clears throat> I guess like, and I, and, and the hilarious thing is, is that, you know, people are like, well, are you telling lies on the internet? It's like, well, no, like I'm not, but like everyone is telling lies on the internet all the time, but it's like the degrees of fallacy that exist in our representations of ourselves on the internet, I think are so, um, so nebulous. And it's like mm. the, the difference between truth and fiction, um, on the internet is, is so blurred at this point. Uh, you know, if we look at, and, and not just in social media, I mean, when we talk about like the news cycle and like, and Trump and, 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 you know, what we're being fed through the algorithms that like the tech oligarchs are dictating to us every day is like, there, there is no, there is no truth in fiction anymore. It's like, what, what is true is like something that you have to parse for yourself at this point. Like the truth is not facts. The truth is like, is context. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, contextually, if you view me on the internet through the lens of auto fiction, um, then it allows you to view it for what it is, which is what I like to consider um, uh, like an artistic outlet. I mean, that is what, like, honestly, like I was so fucking bored in quarantine. Like for the first two months I went insane. Like I fully lost it and didn't know what to do with myself and was so active on the internet like to the degree where it was like I was looking at my screen time count on Sunday mornings like oh. waking up and being like oh my god what is wrong with me like this is like this is this is humiliating like this is the most humiliating this is the most humiliating 10 hours like what you, I'm not doing anything I, I don't even exist in the real world anymore um so uh I forget where I was going with that. I'm just so humiliated about my own admonition that I was spending 10 hours a day on my phone. Um, what was I talking about? You were saying, <laughs> you just went down a shame spiral real quick. Shame. That was like a full shame spiral. You were saying that in the beginning of quarantine, you were so- Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. I was so bored. And so I needed like an outlet because I couldn't like, I, and I'm a furious art maker. Like I just, I produce a lot of shit. I've always like- Gwen, my lovely creative partner who I adore so much, is like always being like, you gotta take on less projects. Like you gotta like, you got <laughs> you gotta know when to say no. And I am really bad at that because I uh, just get really excited about about lots of different things. So I'm constantly saying yes to like lots of different uh, projects and, and avenues and I'll be writing a script and, and you know, I'll start things and, and not finish them and, and then, you know, start and then hate myself and, and then finish them. Um, but I didn't, I couldn't make stuff. Like I was confined to my fucking apartment and I was dying. So I was like, I found, I found like a little reprieve in, uh, in posting like uh, content on Instagram, which is another sad tale because I have to stop doing that because no one's paying me for that. And the content <laughs> is really great in my opinion. Um, 
and it's like you know we're we're creating free content and you know like the the last bastion of capitalism is like the you know the mining of the self and now we're all little like serfs working in the fields toiling for the tech you know the tech stars Zar Zuckerberg and Bezos who are just making a buck off of me posting you know <laughs> their thirst trap selfies with Judith Butler quotes so um yeah, I, I have to, I have to figure out a way to like not, to sort of not be doing that. But I don't know. I, I mean, Instagram, they make it really easy. Like there's a lot of really good, fun tools on it. Like the story feature is a, like, it's actually, like, it's extremely creative. Like they give you a lot of tools to make like really fucking cool, engaging content. So it's like, how am I, how am I going to, how do I not do this? It is really easy. I was like, I was joking it, with like, Jay Stevens today. I, I, yeah. Oh my God. So easy. I, I was joking with Jay Stevens today. I ran into them. I had to get a little coronavirus test today, which I spent three and a half hours doing at Bathurst and Dundas, but it was lovely. I ran into Trisha Black. I ran into Jay Stevens. It was a nice Aww. little time for me standing in line for a while. Um, and I was, and I was, I was talking to Jay saying um, how, uh, oops, am I, are you still there? Yes, yep. you're still there. Um, I was saying, I was telling Jay how, I oh, but like, I think your video's off, maybe. Oh, hang on. Maybe? Oh, is it? What happened? Okay. Hey, I Only see your LV post. picture. Oh, there we go. Is that better? Is that That's better. better. There we go. Hey. <laughs> um, oh, hey, hi. Hello. Hey, hi, hi, hi. Uh, yeah, I was talking to Jay. I, I was like, because uh, CBC was filming something at this coronavirus test. And uh, I was like, I was like, get them out of here. I was like, I'll tell them a real cinematographer's in line. And Jay was like, oh, are you talking about yourself? I was like, no, dude, I'm not a cinematographer. I was like, you're the only cinematographer. Now. And they were like, well, they're like, you know, you've got an eye. I've seen those selfies. And I was like, Jay, the only reason why, cause I'm terrible at taking photos, but I am great at taking selfies. But unfortunately it's only because I have put in the 10,000 hours. <laughs> I was going to say, I think you're so, like, I've seen your photos. I'm like, there's no way you think you're bad. Well, you could think, but there's no way you're bad at taking photos. I've yeah, seen your photos. But, but the thing is, is I can't take good pictures of other things. Like, I can't take good pictures of objects. I can't take pictures of, like, other people. Like, I <laughs> just, I'm not kidding, which is, like, the, is, a, and you know I'm telling the truth because it's humiliating to me because I know I take a great selfie. I, <laughs> I've been doing it, but it's because I've taken so many <laughs> and I've gotten really good because I put in the 10,000 hours of like of, of get, taking good selfies but I haven't put in the 10,000 hours so basically I'm just admitting that I'm a full-blown fucking narcissist <laughs> and um and I'm sorry everyone <laughs> <laughs> I actually I think when I when I think of your Instagram I feel like I'm stepping into like a world like I feel and like in a in a positive way and the and I'm like, oh, but like when I, when I go on your Instagram or on your stories, I'm like, mm -hmm. she is a creator. Like she is an artist. Like it's, and, and you're so, wow. I mean, it can be so easy to get lost in so many of the things. And I think ultimately, if you look at, if anyone were to look at their like Instagram, for example, mm -hmm. I mean, you're basically seeing an example of the areas of your life that you wish you were taking up more of your life maybe mm -hmm. or like I think it can be really telling of yourself or it's the or it's the parts of yourself that you wish you felt like more often or those traits that you want to lean into more often and so yeah. I, I think ultimately I know you're joking about narcissism but like I also think ultimately purposeful and intentional posting is much better than passive posting. And so if you're like, Ooh. no, I'm realizing what I'm posting and I'm being intentional <laughs> about it. And yes, mm -hmm. it is curated, but like, exactly. All of ours is curated. There's a reason that I'm, you know, if I'm, if I'm passively just posting it, you know, posting whatever photo makes me happy that day, or I want the world to see, what do I want the world to see? What do I want them to think about me? And if you really mm -hmm. look at your Instagram, like it's going to tell you a lot about how you feel about yourself and how you want mm -hmm. to be you and we yes. can curate our online presence, but like, do yourself a favor and, and be intentional about it, you know, or. I would agree. Yeah. 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 I, I love your auto fiction. I, I actually, there was something, um, I actually wrote down something you wrote in your auto fiction that I wanted to ask you. Ooh, go on. 
I'm okay, so I am going to quote you here. I know. And I so wrote it down because <laughs> what? Sorry. It makes me so excited that anybody is like, that anybody <laughs> like reads any of it because it's like, it honestly, it's like, an, I feel like it's a kind of an extension of like a teenage diary. And like, uh, it, it like, it's like, I like uh, caveat this with saying that like, please take with a grain, like everyone who, everyone who like watches any of my Instagram shows, like, please know, like, I have a sense of humor about it too. Okay. Like I know it's, but I know it's a bit dumb. <laughs> I know it's a I, bit dumb. Okay. Well, this quote I didn't feel was dumb at all. Okay, here's a go quote. On then. Imagine I was like, here's a quote. Uh, this is Knox. As a teenager, <laughs> she missed prom. No. Um, okay. So I read this and I, okay. So I am going to read this because I, I want to quote you properly. Oh yeah. Go on. Okay. So you said, quote, I wear my ex-lovers like a skin because I write them into characters, not copies, but rather their quality that first captured my imagination gets laced into a part. I slip inside the role, live in them, imagine that I know their mind, end quote. First of all, it's fucking beautiful. Like, yeah. it, I'm like snapping quietly because I don't know what that will do to my mic. <laughs> um, okay, so I, I totally recognize that it's auto fiction, but mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, there can be nuggets of truth in there. And so I'm wondering mm -hmm. what therapeutic quality is there mm -hmm. in getting to either write or mm -hmm. act as a character inspired by these like ex lovers who might've broken mm -hmm. your heart or you might mm -hmm. feel you've broken theirs or what kind of mm -hmm. therapeutic quality is there in writing and acting those characters out? Okay, well, I'm just gonna do some silent snaps too, because <laughs> what a fucking well-researched, beautiful question, Amanda. Oh, thank you, no. Um, and like, I'm so so appreciate that. Like, wow, that that quote resonated with someone. Oh. Um, I think on a high level, uh, being able to feel empathetic towards someone that you were formerly intimate with oh, yeah. is something that is like a gift that I think that artists have the unique opportunity to tap into in a way that I think is so lucky. I don't know, like if there's like some investment bankers that get the same satisfaction out of like some mergers and acquisitions that they're you know, <laughs> like handling, um, let me know. Cause I'm not saying that it's not possible, but um, I think like that, that's the altruistic side of it, I think, is that you are able to find empathy for, um, for their experience and like uh, trying to find the inner workings of, of somebody that you've been formerly intimate with. I mean, like that's humanity. I think that that is I think that if, if that if all of us were able to do that, there would be a lot less, like, frankly, like violence and pain in the world. Um, but it's a very difficult thing to do. Uh, and that's the altruistic side of it. I think that the selfish side of it, which is perhaps the aspect of it that I enjoy even more because I'm a <laughs> wretched narcissistic hedon, um, is that uh, imagining that you know somebody else's mind and being able to like live inside of them, it's kind of like a ownership thing. Like it's kind of like you get to stick your dick inside somebody that like, you know, like formerly was yours and that like you have no ownership over anymore. And so, um, and you know, perhaps, you know, I, you know, no one's ever dumped me. <laughs> <laughs> never That's what we're dumped. going with. That's what we're going with in the auto fiction. Never been dumped. I've never, no. never, never been dumped. No. Never been dumped. Um, never had my heart broken. I've never, been, never been the heartbreaker. So it's just me <laughs> being empathetic and trying to like, you know, never mind. No. Um, um, but it, I think like, it's an interesting, like, it's a, it's a fun exercise to, I don't know, like revisit a, a, an intimacy that you knew so well that you were so involved with, um, and to like feel some kind of, feel some kind of connection, uh, with that former intimacy. Um, and also like a strange ownership. Like it's kind of a, it's kind of a witchy thing. Like you are, you are conjuring um, like a dead intimacy. You are conjuring the essence of, of somebody that you knew the insides of. And that person, and the thing is, is that that person changes. That person is not the person mm -hmm. that they are now. It's like, it's a shadow. It's a ghost of that person. And, you know, when you get to like get inside of that and wear that skin, it's a very, 
I think it's an erotic experience. I think that um, it's like a, it's, it's like, a, yeah, I think, I think really the, what the key word for it is like, it's an, it's an erotic experience and not necessarily just in the sexual context. I think that like eroticism uh, deeply extends into like the, into the sphere of, of, of intimacy. So it's an extremely intimate experience with a ghost. So mm -hmm. if you love fucking ghosts, then <laughs> you should try writing a character based on your ex lover. <laughs> well, as soon and as you said which, them. I was like, I'm like, oh, I'm hooked. You say which I'm in like, let's yeah. do this. I think. Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. Well, and I guess like you would have to, or I would imagine you would have to somehow be able to come at it from quite an unbiased perspective because if you're mm. going to write for this character and not for mm. yourself or you're yeah. going to act as this character and not act as a commentary on the character coming from yourself you do sort of have to like whether it's whether you feel it's from a selfish place or not mm -hmm. ultimately you have to is sort of like just give give way to the empathy because you have to understand mm -hmm. from that person's point of view that's, that's, ex that's exactly it. Because I mean, as an actor, you, you know, the first thing that you do is you can't judge the character. Yeah. You have to, you have to approach the character with like, well, they have a reason for everything that they're doing. And the reason, uh, most of the time, because none of us walk around thinking like, well, I'm a bad person. All of us walk around thinking like, well, the, the actions that I, that I, you know, that I choose to do, uh, are in my, you know, uh, aren't aren't necessarily like always uh completely altruistic but that they're in my best interest and that there's mm -hmm. a reason why i'm doing them um and it's and the reason is not because i'm a bad person there is a reason why they're doing it and so i think that uh that is like it's an ex it's an exciting kind of experiment and i mean and it's not necessarily always like drama either right like with boris um boris is like Cheeky. Um, Boris is like is loosely, loosely based on someone that I had a romantic dalliance with. Um, but is this like weird clown version of that person? So it's like the, the person wouldn't even recognize themselves um, and probably has never seen the show. Um, <laughs> but but the accent, but like the funny thing is, okay, this is like this is a lot. The, uh, they'll I you know what? I hope listen to this um i also we're hope back. they're they're watching and listening i hope that i hope they're watching and i hope they listen to this <laughs> <laughs> um yes i had but also secretly i would be so ashamed and embarrassed and like die 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 because i love them and think they're amazing um uh yes i had an hour and a half audio recording of them when i was interviewing them and so when, when we started making Boris, or when, like, you know, I started working on this character, I was like, I know whose accent I'm going to base this character on. So I went and I've like, I've listened to this interview so many times, like I could almost recite it word for word at this point, because like I would listen to the interview, I would repeat back phrases, I would listen to the interview, repeat back phrases. And so, and the weird thing is, is that the interview is about their life like their upbringing their, like oh relationship to their father which is so funny oh my god if it was i'll just die um <laughs> wow i'm actually fully blushing right now it would be so funny if they heard this but like that's the thing is like i would kind of like like i would die but i would like it a little bit mm. <laughs> um so yeah so i i totally based the accent like off straight up off of that and i think internalized a lot of the sort of uh Bavarian attitudes that were present in that interview. So yeah, there you go. Um, I and love it, was, it. And it was quite a delightful experience. Like it was, I felt like weirdly enough, like, I don't know, there was like a weird, I felt weirdly connected. Um, but it also was like, I, there was like an erotic charge from like listening to this person in my ear and then like mimicking them. Like, I don't know. I'm sure a therapist or Freud would have many things to say about that. <laughs> Um, but I really had a nice time doing it. So <laughs> <laughs> I had a nice time. I love, I love the idea. Like I can totally see what you're saying about that ownership, like taking back the power in a situation yeah. where maybe you sort of feel like really vulnerable. And then also mm -hmm. it's sort of like, it's sort of like you get to hang out with these people that you once loved and maybe still mm -hmm. part of you still loves them. You get to hang out with them again, but on your own mm -hmm. terms. So it's safe. You're in control yeah. and it, yeah. And I, I don't know, it's like when you, it's like when you have, 
Like I would imagine if you had a dream of them and it was like your mm -hmm. perfect dream, it's a safe moment where you get to interact with this like pseudo Boris person. Yeah. And it's for yeah. you and it's safe and it's, yeah. 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 Totally. It is like that, is, that is like, there is, there is a safety to it because you are um, in control of, of, of the representation of that person in that moment. So yeah, it is, there's like a, yeah, it's, um, it, it's almost like, it's almost like you get to rescind the vulnerability that you bequeathed to them in yes. like a moment of like vulnerability or, or intimacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's, highly, yeah. highly recommend. To all <laughs> highly Raise recommend doing it. Yeah. On an X, you'll have a great yeah. time. You'll love it. And you won't yeah. need any therapy. Um, I actually, mm -hmm. that's one area. That's one of the things that I find so um, like addictive mm -hmm. in a healthy way. Oh yes. Uh, with acting is mm -hmm. I, can't get enough of the of being able to experience emotions and situations in a safe way i get to experience someone breaking my heart apart and then if i take care of myself properly i get to walk away from that and i don't have my heart broken but i get to experience that like that to me is the epitome of why i think my heart is like sorry this is what you're doing forever whether you like it or not because i just love that it's the it's the fucking bomb it's the best. yeah it's so good it's the other thing too like i'm gonna say something a little cheeky now and please nobody like be, please please nobody please nobody take it out of context but <laughs> i really like when i get to do like um romantic scenes or Ooh. sex scenes <laughs> oh. Oh. in in films because it's like i get this for free like i get to like I get to like make out with somebody and like know what it would be like to like be romantic and intimate and like a lover to them. Like some people are like, oh God, I hate sex scenes. Like, ah, oh, it's so awkward, so embarrassing. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, this is the, this, this shit is the best. Like I get to kiss this person and they have to pretend to like me too. <laughs> like, it's a really, it's, I, I think if there's, if there's, I mean, there's many reasons why I ended up in this horrible field but um I think that that like I, I one of my one of my like first kisses was like in a play and I remember like having that and being like this rocks <laughs> how old were you how old were you in the play I, I want to picture I was I think I was like 14 mm -hmm. and it was like I'd had like kisses before then but I'd never had like a like a, a like a, like a really like romantic, intimate kiss. And it was like a, oh God, what was it? It was like a Neil Simon, or not Neil Simon. It was like a, oh God, I can't, rem I can't even remember what the play was called. Uh, it was called Tribute. The play is called Tribute, but Tribute, I can't okay. remember. But I can't remember who wrote it. And anyway, so it's like not terrible writing, um, like a pretty well-known play. And the, and the character that I was playing was much older than I was. And it was with adults. It was like a community theater thing. And yeah, I got to like kiss this boy and I was like, well, like sick. <laughs> like, I get to like, I get to like have a kiss like that's like safe and, and I get to, you know, and, and he has to be so nice to me and ask me all these questions. And it was just like a really, I don't know. I, re I really enjoyed that. It was like, it, and I mean like the, it's like, that is such a, I think like it can be such a, I think it can be such a trap too. Cause it's like yeah. the, you get this hit of intimacy for this like brief fleeting moment, but you don't really have to like surrender any of your like actual vulnerability mm -hmm. except for this performance of it. Um, which is like, I'm sure a therapist in Freud would have many things to say <laughs> about that as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they like, don't have to either like the other no. person, because I'm sure there are times where, you know, you might, it's, it's a, it's a fabricated intimacy, whether you have a natural mm -hmm. chemistry with that person or not mm -hmm. for that moment, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, I remember being, it's like, I remember being, um, in grade six and all my friends wanted to play uh, truth or dare. And mm -hmm. I remember being so adamant about like, no, I don't want to play truth or dare. And they were like, Oh, why? Cause you don't want to kiss anyone. And I remember feeling like, no, because if someone wants to kiss me, they better have the guts to kiss me outside a game and not be dared to do it. Ooh. You know I mean? If you wow. want to kiss me, you but then you I deserve for you to kiss me outside of a truth or dare game. And I feel like on with acting sometimes it can be uh -huh. this thing where and I have not personally experienced it, but like you can have this 
it's sort of a fabricated intimacy in the moment because two people can be fabulous actors and maybe have a natural chemistry too. Mm -hmm. But I think it's really easy for one or maybe both of them to slip into that, uh, like that fabricated intimacy mm -hmm. and to maybe fabricate it outside of that. And I think that's mm -hmm. why so many people date while they're filming and then a little while after it's, yeah. it's, and it falls apart. It falls apart, you know, and especially yeah. if one person feeds into it and the other person's like, like, where's the line? Where is the line? Mm -hmm. And especially when you're really good at creating this world, like when you're really good at mm -hmm. acting, it can be, I'm sure it's very confusing sometimes. Where does like that end in real life begin? I don't know. Yeah. I've literally never not fallen for a co-star. Like not once. <laughs> not, not once in my life have I- What? Like, no, I've not once in my life have I escaped a play, um, like a, a, a film, um, a TV series, not freaking once in my entire life have I ever not fallen for a co-star. So, you know, I, I think that relationships, like you can't really, you can't really, bop, like when, when they are so um, important in your life. I think that you, you can't really box them into like, well, this is a romantic relationship. This is not a romantic relationship. This is a work relationship. This is a friendship. I think that like true, like gesamt Kunstwerk relationships with people who have like great effects on you, all of those things are present all at once in absentia and they move around in those spheres. And I think that they're always like knocking up against each other and sometimes they're present, sometimes they're not. Sometimes like one aspect of them is more at the forefront and one is, and others are in the foreground. And I think that like, that is like, that's an interesting relationship to me. Like, I'm not really, I'm not really into, uh, or, or not that I'm not into, I have lots of friends who I'm just like, just friends with, and we just hang out and we, you know, we talk about, um, you know, the weather and, and, you know, like the Game of Thrones, um, and you know, like ter cur cursory relationships, but like the people that I'm really close to are all people where the lines are always a bit blurry. And I think that, um, like for me, I, like that's what I'm the most interested in because then it's like, then it's like, well, what are the possibilities? Like everything is like, there's nothing quite, it, there's, there's always like the potential for, for something else for, you know, for, um, and I think that like, that it's quite a creative springboard. And I, I don't know, I think that, I think a lot of the time we're, we're a little too, I think we're a little too obsessed with categorizing, uh, what relationships have to be. And I think that if, if we were a little more, I think we're, we're too obsessed about categorizing things, period. Like namely like gender and like, you know, shit like that, where it's like, why do we have to put these things in boxes? Mm -hmm. um, but I think that relationships are kind of like do the same kind of overhaul. And I mean, uh, like, I guess, I guess the boxes are good because then people can, you know, we have framework to discuss, uh, you know, and to create and to create boundaries, I suppose. But I think that when you really trust someone um, and love them, I think that the the potential for um, a myriad of different kinds of 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 relationships and for it to like shift and and have many different facets is um, is really cool. Mm -hmm. And I think that in a lot of ways, like I think that the best relationships in and of themselves are a work of art as well. That like, sounds so fucking pretentious. Oh, I but, love that. I don't but, care. I love it. But I, but I really believe that. I think that, I think that like the best, the best relationships that you have in your life are the ones that like have many different aspects and the ones that you, that you think about and that you consider and that you, um, you know, that you allow to evolve and change and surprise you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when, when you're, when you're, uh, when co-stars kind of like fall in love with each other or whatever, the thing is, is that when you're acting, the love is real. It's not fake. You're experiencing it. So like, why is it not real in the same way that like my internet personality is like, well, it's like, it's a manifestation of reality. And so like, why is it not real? Why is it false? Um, like, why is it fiction or why is it fake or what makes it auto fiction in the same way that like a relationship that you are producing, manufacturing for a camera or for an audience on a stage, it's real in the moment. And so why is it fake? Mm -hmm. So I think that, I don't know, I, I'm, I, I've always been really interested in, in, in the, uh, in the ideas of like, of, of fiction versus reality. Um, you know, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to the creation, I guess, of, of, 
of emotions and and relationships mm-hmm. um so yeah like ev- everything's real man everything's real and everything's a lie everything's true and everything's not true um but like I think that's actually, a really valid point though but yeah. like actually kind of it is <laughs> like who 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 gets to be the judge on something is real who gets to say that you yeah. know it's it's like the idea actually okay so for all my podcasts, I always have, yes. um, a couple crystals on my desk and I choose oh, yeah. that day. So yeah. I always have her because, and I forget what she's called, but she sucks mm-hmm. all the negative energy, uh, and the electronic energy from me. Love and that. then today I have one. I'm like, this one is for, uh, creative energy. And this one is for live in the moment. Cause I'm like, because I knew I would be intimidated by you. And I'm like, I, I need these ones. And, and this does, I am saying this for a reason is that I have no fucking idea if they work, but that doesn't matter to me. Doesn't matter. The placebo is the yeah. same as them working. Me thinking yeah, this little crystal here, this gem or whatever, this stone, this rock, yeah. allows me to tap into my creativity. If I believe that, then it's going to happen. So who the fuck cares if it's real or not? I don't care. Yeah. So I, th- I think it is like, who gets to say that that thing is, it was actually a podcast guest who said to me, they're like, yeah, but who cares if it's placebo or not? The placebo that's your experience. It's real. So it's, it's real. So yeah. and I love the idea. Like we don't, I, I, I think I totally agree with you that like in general, we are way too obsessed with boxes. I think mm-hmm. I, <laughs> in, in, in putting people in boxes and categorizing mm-hmm. people. And like, mm-hmm. I also growing up, I think that was a way of me somehow like for security being like, but what is this? I need things to be predictable and, and ironically mm-hmm. opposite to you. And like, I need things to, I don't want chaos. I want it to be predictable. Mm-hmm. And I think mm-hmm there is a way to eliminate those boxes and still have boundaries. Yeah. Like you can still- And make- I think you only, you only, you don't get that with everyone though, right? Yeah. Like it's like, yeah, it's not that's something you can just kind of like, yeah, it's not something you can toss around. Like I think it, I think it takes a lot of time and trust and respect mm-hmm. uh, in order to like have the privilege of experiencing uh, a relationship like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's like, it takes, it just, it's just so much, it takes so much time and it, and it takes, you know, it takes energy and effort too. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. As with anything that is of value, it, of comes value. With, it comes with much cost and much work. Yeah, I <laughs> Can that. I ask you one dumb question? Please do. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's, what's your star <laughs> sign? <laughs> oh my God. Shut up, Knox. I literally wrote in my notes ask her about it. And then I, and then I deleted it because I don't know anything about it, but I have this spidey sense that you do. And so I, okay. So I'm an Aries. Is that good? Is that, what does that mean? Is that bad? Is that good? I don't know anything about it. (gasps) No, you're not. You're also an Aries. Oh my God. If your phone dies right now, I'll be so mad. What? Mm -hmm. When is your birthday? No, no, no. Wait, where is, okay, wait, now I'm just seeing your photo and I want to see your face Oh, during I'm back. Here. the Aries conversation. Yeah. Aries, hi. Okay. I don't know anything about it. When's your birthday, Knox? My birthday is on March 25th. Okay. I am April 19th. So okay, so I, you're at the I, end. God, I'm at the end. And it was very confusing because growing up when I read J14 and things, some of them said I was a, I know, some of them said I was a Taurus and some said an Aries. And I have very much struggled growing up with figuring out like, this is again, I'm like, figuring out identity and who am I and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And I blame that. But I'm a cuss, actually, uh, to quote one of my earlier guests, Kara Connors, I'm a cuspy Aries is what she says. Cause I'm yep. a cusp. Yeah. And I also am a cuspy Aries, but on the other side of that. The same side of the, or the different sides of the same coin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. So why do you ask what star sign I am? Like what, what? Yeah. I was just curious. Cause like, I, not that I know that much about it. I don't. And I don't really think like, I'm like, I'm like, whatever. I'm like, I'm like, I'm so like, I'm so humiliated to like, even like, like, like confess being like, oh yeah, astrology. Yeah. But I do find that there are, oh my God. Okay. Whatever. I'm just going to say it. There are certain signs that I find, like I have quite an affinity with and that I like that I get along with quite well. And I was like, I have a feeling that Amanda is either a Libra or an Aries. And oh. I was right. Yeah. And because I really, it. I really get along with both of those star signs. Oh, I'm so flattered that you yeah, were yeah. like, I think she's a star sign I get along well, with. 
And it was funny, like, and I thought maybe, I thought it was like, also, I thought maybe you were a Taurus. And so there you go. And you're a cuspy one. So. I'm a cuspy little Taurus. There you go. So there you go. Oh yeah. my God, Knox. I yeah. just have enjoyed this so much. And likewise, like, yes. And, and I would love, I'm just going to hit you up one day to just have a vodka off air via I Zoom would, or in a park or whatever. I would love that. I am like, so what I'm, what I'm saying is that I think that it's going to become very fashionable to have like winterized uh, beverages in the city because like we can't really go inside to like drink alcohol right now. It's not, mm -hmm. it's like, I mean, I think that they're probably going to shut down the bars again anyways, but patio bevies, very nice. And like all of the, all of the fancy bars are investing in some very nice heating lamps. Yeah. So we can put on our dead grandma's furs and, you know, head to the patios and have some vodka on the rocks with a little olive juice. Yes. And when I, yes. Yes. When I was in, um, I went to Salem with my friend, um, Ooh. Her, oh, it was like cool. the best. And we went and had the most amazing spiked apple cider. It was like with whiskey, apple cider, some cinnamon. I'm going to, I think she has it written down. I'm going to figure it out. And we should have those too. Cause it was delightful yes. and it warmed me up on the inside so much. That sounds so good. And yeah, like I think there's something quite like European and kind of classy about like being on a patio with heating lamps, like when it's quite chilly and like having a cocktail, like, that's, that sounds great. Yeah. Like, yeah, COVID-19 fucking sucks, but like, we got to make the best of it. We can still be safe and have fun. I feel like I need to yeah. get a t-shirt. We can still respect other people's health while also having a fucking party. You can have yes. a metaphorical party. You can have yes. both. A, yeah, a party with one to two people. <laughs> one to two people being six feet away outside or inside with masks. And listen, if you... Yeah. It's actually easy for, easier for me to enjoy myself with somebody if we are both like, so we're going to follow COVID precautions and respect each other's like health mm -hmm. and safety and everybody else's. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. Now we can have fun. That's Exactly. Because I totally agree with you. Yeah. It's like, it's been so, I mean, this is my, my new tagline now is 2021 rhymes with fun. fun. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I because I'm yeah. so ready to have a little bit of fun. Just a little and bit, think, come on. Yeah. Just a little bit. And like, I think we can have like some, like, we can, you know, we can pregame 2021 in 2020 on the patios with the heating lamps yes. and a vodka. I'm there. That's what I think. Yeah. I'm yeah. there. I'm there. I love that so much. Well, well, I'll let you awesome. get to your, to your next, to your next, uh, engagement. Engagement. Um, this has been oh. so nice. This Honestly, so like nice. I, I feel, I feel like I have to Venmo you for like my beautiful therapy session. I'm like leaving this. I'm like, mm, great. <laughs> Feeling so good. Bought a winter coat, had a vodka, had a nice chat. Oh, you have to send me a picture of the winter coat. Honestly. Really the, nice. Yeah, you have to. And, and it is, it, it makes me so happy that you would be leaving here feeling good. That's all I want. So that's oh, so wonderful. And like, thank you again. And I just, oh, I'm so glad I finally got to connect with you. So yeah. Thank Can't you. wait to do it. IRL. IRL with our heating lamps. I love it. Oh, okay. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Liquid Courage podcast. If you liked what you heard, please help me out by leaving a rating or a comment on your Apple podcast app or on YouTube or wherever you might be listening from. And if you're like me and you have an awful memory or you just don't want to have to remember when the next episode comes out, hit that subscribe button and the newest episode will automatically download for you. Just like magic. I love it. <laughs> you can also follow the podcast on Instagram at Liquid Courage Podcast and on Twitter at Liquid C Podcast. And if you're still listening, I want to remind you that a pandemic is still taking place. And I don't say that to be a buzzkill or to scare you, but to ask you to please, please continue or start wearing your mask when you're out of your house and around other people. We should be treating people how we want to be treated. And if you want to be safe and healthy, respect the health and safety of the people around you. Please. Thanks again for listening. It means the world to me. Stay safe and take care. Thank you.